I'm Joshua Bardwell, and we're all going to learn something today. We're all going to learn why I'm not getting any video from my copter. This is a real-world troubleshoot. You're going to go through it with me. Stay tuned. So here's the deal. Here's what the, the problem is. I've got my screen here, and I'll just record it on the camera so I don't have to do a DVR video separately. And I've got a battery here with a smoke stopper. The smoke stopper bulb is why it is safe for me to plug this copter in while lazily leaving the props on because the smoke stopper bulb will prevent the props. From, the copter can't draw more than about three amps and the motors just can't spin very hard. They'll give you a surprise as you might have heard in one of my older videos, but uh, they won't hurt anything. So I'm going to plug in. You can hear that. You hear that? So you already can tell something ain't right. And you can see here I've got black screen. OSD is fine, but I've got black screen. Now when you hear that, I don't know if the microphone picked up that, um, that humming noise. It's a high-pitched humming noise. Uh, it, I'm, I'm going to guess that it didn't. But when you hear a high-pitched humming noise like that, that is usually, I believe that's usually an inductor is making a noise. Something has gone wrong in the inductor and it probably means you got, you got a power supply that has failed. So look, our goal is going to be to figure out where the, the component has failed. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, top plate of the copter off. Let's talk through a little bit of the troubleshooting that we can do already. The fact that we see video at all tells us that the video transmitter is working, right? Uh, the fact that we see the OSD tells us that the flight controller is probably working. So we can already suspect that we've got a damaged camera. I mean, that, uh, I don't, that, that, that seems, that's my guess as to what's going on here. But, uh, you know, if guessing was good enough, then we would never have to troubleshoot. So I'm going to troubleshoot. Okay. So, I'm going to take the camera out of here. Hello, come on. There you go. I'm going to set the copter aside for a minute. And here's what we're going to do. I'm going to use this pigtail that came with the camera. And don't, lo don't lose these. Don't throw these out. Um, they're super useful for troubleshooting. Because I can plug the camera in directly to the screen... And I can find out uh, if I can just sort of cut right to the chase and find out if the camera is working. If you don't have a screen like this, this LCD screen, you can uh, you can just use a television if your television has one of these oldie fashioned kind of inputs. Um, but this is just one of many reasons why it's super helpful to have a screen like this sitting around. Now this camera can take 5 to 17 volts. so. We should be good to go on a on a 4S. Uh, I'm gonna need a plug though. That's a shame. Oh, here we go. Look what I have sitting around. Oh, I haven't done a video about this. This is a 2S, and it will do very nicely. Thank you for your SFPV for this. Take a Fat Shark battery and plug it right in. Now I'm listening for that humming sound, and I'm not hearing it, and that's discouraging. I was I'm not sure if I was hoping it was the camera or not. And, oh, the camera is working fine. That's a real freaking shame. That's uh, a real freaking shame. Um, I say it's a real freaking shame because that suggests that it's something to do with the Betaflight F3 board. So we've confirmed that the camera is working correctly by plugging the camera directly into a screen, and it worked fine. And that suggests... Uh, that's real freaking what a hassle what a hassle that is okay what could it be what could it be what's died well let's go ahead and plug this uh, sucker in again using the smoke stopper and listen for that sound no I don't hear the high-pitched humming sound now very interesting. Plug the camera in. Oh yeah, sure, now it's gonna work fine. Problem solved. Ha! 
problem solved, kids. Yeah, you just take it apart. This sucks, to tell you the truth. Because now I know something is fishy on this copter. And I know it's going to break again. And I have no way of figuring out what it was. Was it the camera? It's like, there's no way to figure it out. There's no possible way. Um, and it's going to break. So I can't, I can't trust this quadcopter. This is how you end up in a situation where, uh, you know, I was at the race and I put the copter, I heard this story just today. I was at the race. I put the copter, uh, on the start line, something burned out. I know that this is fishy. If I were a serious top tier, hardcore racer, I would put this copter aside and I would not race it, uh, until I figured out or uh, what was broken on it. I just got to wait for it to break again, or I got to just, I don't know, re I'm not going to rebuild the whole copter. Um, and if I was a normal person, I would cross my fingers, and that's what I'm going to do. Um, there you go. That's going to be it for now. Uh, maybe we'll come back to this, or maybe this copter will work forever, uh, and uh, it'll just have turned out to be a fluke. But well, well, let's sum up in case this is the end of the video, in case I never come back to this and it just works correctly forever. We got black screen. Black screen usually indicates that the camera is not working. Static usually indicates that the video transmitter is not working. If you got static, use your LaForge or your TrueD, to use your spectrum scanner to scan and see if the video transmitter is powered up and transmitting. If you got black screen, you got to start fooling around with the camera. Somewhere between the camera and the video transmitter, you got a bad connection is usually what it is. The fact that we see the OSD tells us that the video transmitter is definitely, definitely 100% working right. And it also tells us that the freaking flight controller, Betaflight F3, the built-in OSD is working right. A lot of times you'll see that the OSD will go off, will, will stop working, but the camera is still fine. That's the opposite of my problem. These boards, all these boards with the built-in OSD, they will pass the camera signal just fine. Uh, it's just that... Um, when the OSD breaks or dies for some reason, you still see the you'll still see the camera. You just won't see the OSD. I have heard of some people not being able to see their image when the PAL and NTSC setting in the flight controller, the beta flight, was set incorrectly. I haven't found that to to have that effect, but I have heard of that. Okay, so then that leads us to suspect the camera, and we hear the high pitched humming noise. Now, what I should have done is got in there with my ear and tried to listen for exactly where the high pitched humming noise is coming from, because that is that usually means that you've got a power supply, a voltage regulator, a switching voltage regulator that's failing, and the inductor is humming. You ever, you ever walk by a big transformer and it's going that 60 hertz hum from the coils? Well, a little tiny mini micro inductor like it's on some of these boards, like this guy right here. See that inductor right there? Under the right conditions, that'll hum too, but it'll be a really high-pitched hum. If you can figure out where the humming noise is coming from, that's ideal, because that really tells you what's failing. So then, we suspect the camera. I suspect the camera, and I take the camera off, unplug it, and, oh, I should unplug this battery. No reason to have that plugged in. And I plug it directly into a display using this guy, right? And that, anytime you have a fishy camera, you you can't tell. Is it your camera, your, your, your OSD, is it your PDB, is it your video transmitter? You don't know. Take this guy out. This came, your camera came with one of these, okay? Something like this. And uh, plug it into your television. Plug it into your LCD display. Heck, plug it into your goggles. If your goggles have a, your goggles probably have a cable that'll let you plug this directly in. And just plug it up to a battery, right? And now you know if the camera's working, here, then it should then start tracing it out. Just basically start looking for the bad component. If it's not the camera, then check your wiring. And if it's, you know, uh, then check your video trends. Anyway, there you go. Alrighty, well, if this is indeed the end of this and I never happens again, then this will be the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope it was educational and um, happy flying. That's what you get with a real world troubleshoot is sometimes just, you know, it was broken and then suddenly it's not broken. Oh, well, I'm going to enjoy flying my copter, I guess. Woot! Happy flying.